you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Manitoba Show Rise and Shine Manitoba here on ASTV Productions. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. This edition of Rise and Shine Manitoba is brought to you by the official sponsor of Rise and Shine Manitoba, Fabric Land Winkler, as well as our other sponsors in Evolve Green, AETI, and Systems Beauty College as well. We got a great show in store for you guys today. Three guests will be joining me on today's edition of the show. We're going to be talking to the man himself, Harry Siemens, coming up here in just a moment on the Farm Report, getting the scoop on what's happening in agriculture here in Manitoba since the last time that I talked to him. And then we're going to have Gordy Tummelson on goalie coach of Pilot Mound Hockey Academy. He's going to talk about the player arrivals that uh, came in on Labor Day on the Monday and some other things as well. And I'm also going to have Noah Slayan on uh, one of the guys of uh, Cancer Care Manitoba Foundation. And we're going to talk about that bike ride he had to Gimli on August 21st. And then he came back on August 22nd to Winnipeg to complete the ride. And then we're going to dive into Graham's opinion at the end. Some changes with uh, that segment today, but we're going to get into that a bit later. So without further ado, it's time to start Manitoba show now here on Rise and Shine Manitoba. And you know what that means, Manitoba. It's time to rise and shine here on ASTV Productions. That's funny. I just realized that I'm using my coffee with Graham mug. Wrong show, but uh, it is what it is. If you guys uh, don't know what coffee with Graham is, by the way, you guys should check it out every Tuesday and Thursday morning. Might have an episode tomorrow. Uh, Stay tuned for that announcement at the end of this episode. But let's get into the first guest today. As mentioned in the intro, Harry Siemens on the Farm Report today. Of course, the Farm Report brought to you by Wolf Enterprises. And um, Harry. Joining me now, Harry said that he almost forgot that we had a show since uh, we're doing this on a Wednesday, but you know, it's great that you didn't forget and you're on the show today here, Harry. Thank you so much for taking the time as always and joining Thank Rise you. and Shine Manitoba. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And you know, it's always, always a privilege to be able to tell the story of farming one farmer at a time, one event at a time, one situation at a time. And that's what I've been doing for over 50 years and it's been a real privilege and when I get a chance I like to take it and uh, there's very few things that stand in my way you know I I worked for 14 years as a farm broadcaster that's where I started I went from 1971 I got right off the tractor into the studio and I you know in those 14 years I don't know if I ever really booked off sick except for an operation I had for a hernia in 1982 and so you know what uh I love it. And uh, right now, uh, things in agriculture, you know, we've got different issues. We've got different things happening. But for the most part, uh, the harvest continues. We've had beautiful rains across the province. We've talked about that the few previous shows. 
but they still keep coming. We still have, you know, and, and so uh, they delayed the harvest, but I believe farmers are back at it and combining like they would under normal situations. The only thing that isn't normal right now, Graham, is the fact that a lot of the crop isn't what it would have been, say, a year ago. A year ago, we had a great crop. And so farmers are taking off uh, what they can. I had a chance to to visit with an individual yesterday from the uh, Western uh, Grain Elevators uh, Association, Wade uh, Sokovich, who's the executive director. And it's the association that, uh, at least their member association, that has all the various elevator companies as part of an association. It's an association that I've followed for years. And uh, we've got a situation where farmers forward contracted their grain. That means, uh, you know, when, when, when the crop looked really good, uh, you know, a good start in, in, say, May, June, and, and farmers can forward sell at rising prices if the prices are rising. So the farmers kept selling bits and bits of their crops uh, right into fall through the winter uh, and, uh, and last fall. And so now with crop shortfalls, there's a dilemma. The farmer, the elevator companies that took those forward contracts from farmers, they have also sold those uh, contracts, that grain, physical grain, overseas or wherever it may be. Now farmers don't quite have enough grain in some cases to fill those contracts. And so that presents a problem. So so they want to somehow get out of it. Well, it's a contract all the way down the line. And so we had a great visit about how that affects farmers and, and how it's a tough situation because the grain company needs to fulfill its contract. They need the farmer to fulfill their contract. And so uh, right now we've got a, a, a challenge uh, that uh, will play itself out uh, throughout the next uh, number of months through the winter and so forth. So that's, that's one issue. But you know what? The grain prices are still great. And for the most part, uh, we've got a fairly decent crop across Western Canada. Uh, decent, I mean, relatively speaking, because of the drought. But the in most cases, the rain has replenished the subsoil moisture. That's the good part of it. We are set. We can do our fall field work, the tillage that people do after the harvest. They can apply the products they need to apply. They can move um, forward and, and expect a, a little better more hope for next year so that's a that, that's a that's a good thing and but at the same time we still have cattle producers looking for feed governments have implemented some programs to haul in feed from the east and then uh, we you know everybody's kind of working together on this and so therefore uh, even that part and and then of course we have the whole uh, pig business you know the pig business across canada Graham, for your viewers, yeah. is worth $25 billion annually. Wow. 20, that's with a B. $25 billion yeah. annually across Canada. And so when the pig industry hurts, uh, it hurts the farmers, it hurts the suppliers, it hurts the feed companies, it hurts the employees. So right now, we're, we're in that situation where the prices are actually pretty good. The pig farmers are making some money, but we have one an, an ugly thing out there that everybody's hoping against hope will not enter into the pig industry in the North America, and that's African swine fever, very prevalent in China, killing you know millions of pigs in China. And now the latest we got is that it, it's actually appeared in Haiti and uh, the Dominican Republic. Now we're starting to get into our our hemisphere here, so. If, Farmers are really, not only farmers, the entire industry is doing what it can, number one, to keep the disease out. Number two, if, heaven forbid, it should come, then what do we do then? Because if one pig barn gets the disease here in Manitoba, then all pig barns have to shut down. Nobody can export anything. They don't necessarily have to shut down, but they will have no place for their pork to go. That's how serious this problem is. So we could conceivably hurt a $25 billion industry if we don't keep that disease out. And so I'm not throwing an alarm or anything because so far we've been very successful at keeping it out. But at the same time, uh, we don't want it in here. 
So that's a, a something to look at because right now, uh, Graham, probably one of the biggest challenges that people see across Canada are the is the cost of living. You know, the, the cost of living, which is such a large part of it, has to do with food prices, right? And rental prices, housing. So that's a challenge. And, and so now we want to make sure that we keep all our industries going that produce food so that that pr uh, price of food doesn't go higher even higher yeah that's uh that's very interesting about that african swine flu like you're talking about it would be so detrimental if it uh somehow reaches canada here fingers crossed that that doesn't happen could you speak about just the the things uh, i guess i don't know if you can answer it completely but just what uh farmers have been doing to, to keep this disease out from uh, affecting their pigs that's a really good question Grant. That, that's uh the biggest challenge, I have a very good friend. His name is Dr. Uh, Dr. John, I call, I call him. And, and Dr. John Carr, for a minute, forget his last name, it's spelled C-A-R-R. -R. He's, a, he's probably the, the most renowned livestock consultant veterinarian in the world. He feeds pigs in nine countries. And the reason, you know, I haven't seen him, I used to see him two to three times a year because he consults with a lot of the Hutterite colonies right here in Manitoba and Alberta. So I haven't seen him because of the pandemic. He hasn't been able to come in here. So the last time I saw him was in, in December, um, October 2019. But we, we Skype. We Skype on a regular basis. And uh, he feeds pigs in China. He consults, uh, you know, he has 150,000 sows. So his main comment, his main line of defense, the first line of defense is making sure you know we uh, we talk about biosecurity and biosecurity means we've got to keep everything that would be any potential threat keep it out of the barns so he tells hog producers build fences around your hog barns and and you know they always used to say that you know fences can either make bad neighbors or good neighbors so so the big thing that producers are afraid of is that Oh, we're just trying to hide something as far as building a fence around a hog barn. Well, that's not the case. The case is we want to keep out any disease because the biggest carrier of the African swine fever are the wild pigs, the wild boars, you know, the wild pigs that are that roam around in Manitoba, roam around in Alberta and Saskatchewan. They don't have it yet. But a year and a half ago, a wild pig was discovered with African swine fever in Germany, and it shut down their pig industry wow. and, and those kinds of things. So, so number one, keep anything out. And the other thing is, you know, we have so many foreign people coming from China, from all over the place, and, and they may well be at home and, and mother or grandmother gives them a, a sandwich or a pork and they fly into Canada and it may be a piece of pork. Well, that piece of pork, you know, it gets old and they may throw it over a fence somewhere. Bingo, it may have African swine fever. It's that simple. So we've got to be aware. You know, we've got more dogs sniffing for, for, for pork at airports. We have more people watching the fact, what are you bringing in? You know, don't bring in any foreign objects as far as any meat is concerned. So, so that's the thing. It, it's not detrimental to humans. It doesn't affect humans in any way as far as physically and health-wise. But it sure can affect the industry, and that would affect uh, employer, employee, and employers as well. So, number one, we got to keep the disease out. Biosecurity is number one. I mean, I used to be able to walk into a pig barn. I can't anymore because I may, you know, I, I could be carrying any number yep. of pig-related diseases had I been on another hog barn. And so I, you know, so when I want a hog picture, luckily most of the hog producers have good as phone and cameras as I do. So they shoot the pictures for me, but I can't walk into the hog barn the way I, I used to. And, and I really miss that. Yeah, I, I bet. And just, uh, yeah, just the, the way you talk about the industry, just what it's worth. And, you know, it, it would be just so detrimental if somehow 
you know, the, the African swine flu comes in because it's going to have some, some consequences, then it's going to be a trickle down effect. Right. But it's great to know that farmers are uh, doing what they can to do their best to, to try to keep this out for sure. Uh, you announced something on your Twitter. You tweeted something. I, I saw it on your page saying Manitoba announces a program for livestock producers. Give us an insight to uh, what that's about. Yes. Uh, it's uh it's basically a program, see, down east, uh, Ontario, further east, they have lots of hay, lots of feed. But livestock producers in Manitoba can't afford to bring that feed in. If they have to pay the trucking and the freight rate uh, to bring that in, uh, it's just their their network, uh, their income it goes into the negative. So uh, the governments, both provincially and federally, put together a program. I don't have the exact details, just I'll give you the overview. And that's basically to uh, help pay for transportation costs, maybe to help pay for some of the feed, you know, offset some of the feed costs. Because, you know, when demand increases, what happens? The price goes up, right? So right. now we've got trucking companies that are in the business and as just like anybody else, you know, when they see... A, a, hay, a bale of a load of hay that they can haul from Ontario to Manitoba. Hey, you know what? It's in demand, so they'll charge a little bit more. I'm not criticizing the trucker, but the government stepped in to subsidize some of those freight rates, subsidize some of those feed costs, so that producers in Manitoba can actually have some feed and do not have to sell off their entire cattle herd like we were doing earlier now and then with the rain you know we have had three to four or five inches of rain in those areas that too bodes well because they were able to prolong their grazing because some of the pastures started to come back not only that it looks much better for next year so now we just need about three four feet of snow in winter time to cover all that and give us the extra moisture next spring i know that's exactly what your yeah. viewers want to hear <laughs> well uh you know living in manitoba i know you know like myself we always get our uh fair amount of snow here in uh, manitoba so i don't think there should be an issue on that front for sure um ending off with this harry for this week it's uh harry siemens farming tip of the week on siemens says let's uh hear what you got for us this week you know i don't want to sound like a broken record but we were getting into that time of the year where well, you know, farmers are wanting to get that crop off. And so my tip, uh, you know, I, I saw this uh, combine with a, what the large pickup header driving down a narrow road and a woman focused on writing what that meant to her and how she appreciated the farmers and how those farmers had to do what they've got to do. And so she wrote a piece challenging all people. If you see a moving vehicle, a farm, a combine, whatever, Take the minute and 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 you know if you're if it's if that's in it for you, say a prayer for that farmer because they're the ones that are producing the food for us. But just wish them well and and give them a thumbs up instead of a finger up, you know, in order when they're holding up uh, traffic, so to speak, because they're just moving as from one. And you know when when I used to farm back in the 60s, 70s, you know, a pickup. The pickup that picks up the grain to bring the grain into the combine, you know, it was maybe 10, 12 feet wide. Now they've got headers that are 50 feet wide. Wow. And uh, and so you can tell you can see what I'm and tractors, you know, you know, when I would used to get on a tractor, you could hop, you know, hop on the tractor. Well, now they've got big cabs and big this and that, and they got to move down the road with a big implement. So be careful, everybody. The farmer is trying to do his or her part. It means that we too have to do our part. Well, as always, great words from the very wise man that knows his stuff out of agriculture. Harry Siemens on hey. the report here on uh, Rise and Shine Manitoba. Of course, Harry, thank you as always for uh, joining yeah. me once again here on the show. I love here. coming on with you. Awesome. Great to hear it. We'll, uh, we'll see you on Monday. I guess, Harry, until then, uh, take care. We're going to go to our uh, first commercial break here in the show now. Coming up after the break, I'll be uh, not with Harry, but with another guest, Gordy Tummelson, goalie coach of Pilot Mount Hockey Academy. Join the show after the break. You're watching Manitoba Show, Rise and Shine Manitoba, here on ASTV Productions. Stick with us after the break.
and welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba here on ASTV Productions. Of course, you just saw or heard the music. Just watch that commercial from our official sponsor of Rise and Shine Manitoba, Manitoba Show Fabric Land Winkler. If you guys want to check out Fabric Land Winkler's uh, website, um, you know, their products they have, be sure to check them out, uh, you know, uh, Fabric Land Winkler on their website. And uh, they also got a Facebook page too, which is pretty cool. And I'm pretty sure an Instagram page as well. So if you're uh, on one of those, be sure to check it out if you, you want to get some fabric. Uh, yeah, so welcome back to this edition of Rise and Shine Manitoba, everybody. Um, you know, just joined by Harry Siemens on the show on the Farm Report. Now we're going to move into some hockey talk and you know the hockey season right around the corner and what better way to uh you know cover hockey than to have gordy tummelson goalie coach of pilot mount hockey academy join the show masked up gordy how's it going on this wednesday morning thanks for taking the time to join the show today thanks graham uh the mask is on only because i had an old tooth that just gave out the other day and uh, so there's a big hole right where my smile is, and I, I thought it best to cover that up. So I'm pretending that I'm masked up for um, for COVID, but I'm just masked up because uh, no one wants to see an, an old guy with missing teeth, etc. So as embarrassing as that might seem, here I am to chat with you and, and uh, talk about hockey. And I do want to say the hockey people would like three to four feet of snow. Uh, that's okay, as long as it doesn't block the way to the rink. Okay, Harry, so you make sure of that. We're happy people. <laughs> yeah for sure uh you know as long as you guys can enter into the ring stuff like that uh it should be all good no matter how much snow we get but yeah um i'm fortunate about your tooth but uh yeah he, he'll up soon <laughs> for sure gordy um yeah you know it's, it's just the way it goes sometimes right but you know you look pretty good in the mask uh it's yeah it's gonna be fun to talk to you about you know, the, the player rivals that uh, arrived to the academy on Monday, saw the pictures on social media. It's crazy just seeing uh, a packed place again like you guys have uh, just with everything we've been through the, the past year and uh, <clears throat> over a half. Just talk about how exciting it was to, to see these players arrive and to see the, the academy booming again. Well, I'll tell you, we, you know, you, you, you go through the last year and, the, and the, the fact that we didn't play much or practice much, do anything much. And then you get here and then all of a sudden the kids show up and man, the energy those people have just actually turns you right on and makes the whole thing worthwhile. Of course, that's really, a, I'm sure for my, the entire coaching staff, we're only there for the kids. Uh, there's not a lot of glory that goes to the coaches in it as well. It shouldn't be. Uh, and so the energy they bring, uh, brings out the, the best in us. And so we're with 60, 60 players, I think 45 of them brand new to Pilot Mound. Um, and parents show, and, and coming from, I drove into the parking lot of the hotel on um, on Sunday evening and, and and pulling up right beside me with people from California, from just, uh, just outside of Stockton, California, uh, who are playing on our team, uh, one of the forwards. I didn't know the player's name and the people, but got to know them pretty quickly. And uh, and they're excited to come up to uh, to Little Pilot Mound and and learn how to play hockey and get a, a, a better education. Yeah, that's uh, great to see. Of course, Pilot Mound are always bringing in players not from just Manitoba but other areas in Canada and and, and the states too. And I mean Taiwan, right, or Thailand, or wherever <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah. You know, which is just <laughs> awesome to see you guys are branching out there. Uh, you know, just what, what was it like on that first day on uh, Labor Day on the Monday? Just, uh, what, what you guys, you know, took these players through, was there like a, an orientation? Take us through yeah. what, uh, what was going on on Monday. Well, they, they opened the doors up in the morning at nine o'clock for people who were coming into, into the, into the town. Um, all of the, uh, at nine 30, all of the, um, the U15s who are being billeted off campus, uh, were, were, um, brought together the parents they the billet uh, parents were brought in and then they off they went to get themselves settled and uh, come back to the rink for uh 11 30 we had lunch at 11 30 and so all of the players that are in the dorms and their parents uh needed to be around about 11 30 
we had a nice lunch. Uh, they um, sweet corn from right, you know, they basically just picked it off the back of the, the arena almost and brought it in and, uh, and uh, a pork uh, and uh, pork buns and talking about pork and today and uh, certainly and, and salad and whatnot. Everybody had a big feast. We had uh, about a 20 minute orientation all together. The, um, there were 300 people in the curling club sitting, listening as players, parents, friends, family, all from literally all over North America, or at least Canada, uh, from Ontario West up in the Nunavut and Northwest Territories. Uh, and then uh, certainly some of the kids from the States as well. We uh, Then they, they broke off into three groups, the three different teams. And uh, and then they all got to go to their dressing room, which was a big reveal for the new kids. And the, the dressing rooms are absolutely outstanding. And and so the kids go in, ooh, and ah, put their stuff up, and they get their sweaters, and they get all the good stuff. So it's a, it's a, big, it's a big deal. And, and the, the, the neat part is the parents kind of go, okay, this is what I'm sending my kid to. And this is really neat. You know, it's not just a place in, in a city somewhere. You go there, and you're kind of a number. You're a special person in Pilot Mountain because you just added, we just added 60, 10% to the population uh, by bringing in the three teams. So parents are excited to kind of get a good lay of the land and they've have, if they haven't been there. The kids are just excited to get on the ice. And on, and on uh, the, the night before we got to, to uh, Sunday evening, every kid that was in town, there was probably 20 of them already, uh, was on the ice at the rink having a skate the day before the skate, you know, sort of thing. So yeah. it was really neat to have them do that. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I saw those dressing rooms on um, on your guys' social media. Those, those look sweet. and Those look yeah, sweet yeah. for sure. It's uh, a luxury for sure for the players to get to have dressing rooms like that. Um, you know, just uh, school's in session today, right? The, the first yes, day sir. of classes. Uh, just uh, how uh, – how nice is that knowing that we're, we're back to some normal in that capacity, oh. just, just seeing kids in school, in Pilot Mound, actually in person and subversively. Well, it's, it, it's wonderful. There's certainly, you know, there's certainly a tenseness about, you know, the Delta variant and all of that stuff going around. However, there's, you know, everybody's got their fingers crossed. Everybody in the organization is uh, vaxxed appropriately. We had a couple of players that didn't come because they wouldn't get back or couldn't get back, whatever their deal was. So, you know, we, we lost a couple of players that way, unfortunately. However, everybody's vaxxed. Everybody's uh, wearing masks when they have to. And, um, and, uh, and, and yeah, we're excited to have people around us and be able to do the things we want to do to prepare our hockey teams uh, for both school and for, um, for a new way of life for 10 months for, for all of them. And, and the hockey program, of course, as well. Yeah, and uh, it's great that, you know, everyone in the academy is vaccinated at this point. And I'm guessing, like, with the new update in uh, Hockey Manitoba's return to play, there, there's not much effect on that part for you guys. Explain if there there's any uh, concerns for you guys with the, the update of return to play, or would you say that you guys are checking all the boxes in terms of what's allowed at this point? Yeah, we're, we, we've uh, fallen right into line. You you can't not fall into line. You get reported and you get shut down. So there's, you know, and you got too, too, there's too much at stake not to follow protocol. You, you just don't want to do something that's not right. And so, you know, we've got, we've, we, in the orientation, of course, we talked about mask wearing wherever and in stores for the kids that uh, as they wander the town a little bit and go back and forth to school. Um, it, we, uh, you know, we, we, but we, you know, so we don't have any issues, uh, with, uh, with the, uh, the protocols they are all fine. Uh, we're, we're, we're following them to a T as best I can tell. And, um, and, and so, uh, you know, there's nothing in there that we haven't seen before and they're, and they're a bit looser. The only thing restriction we have is we can't travel outside the province until at least October the 1st. Yeah. Now that's, that's what we're hoping that you know, happens because we're, uh, because we're, uh, you know, we don't get too involved in that variant in other provinces. Manitoba's done a pretty good job uh, of vaccination. Some of the other provinces have not uh, as well, but they're catching up, we hope. 
and that and, and we know that all the other teams in our CSSHL uh, are certainly um, are certainly doing the right things as well. So we're we're pretty confident that unless there's some kind of thing that happens that we're not aware of that you know kind of shocks us, we're going to be in pretty good shape after October the first. Well, one thing that is very exciting is first game of the year coming up. It's not regular season, but uh, exhibition game coming up on Sunday uh, in Pilot Mound. Um, you know, the U18 female team taking on Pemina Valley, a team from the MFHL. Just uh, what, what's the excitement, in your opinion, going to be like when, when that puck is dropped and, and we're finally back to, to playing hockey here in Pilot Mound on Sunday? Well, the girls, of course, are, you know, they're, they're pretty, they're, they're extremely pumped because they're the ones playing the game. And so uh, when, we, you know, they got advised of that, they're excited as heck. They're ex excited to be on ASTV and, and we're excited to show that game. So their parents, in, wherever they are, from Chicago, Toronto, Ottawa, and I'm just talking about the goalies now, um, and, uh, and, and Alberta and, 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 People, a couple of from Manitoba. Then, of course, we go to the Northwest Territory. We're excited to be on TV and and showing off our team and uh, and playing in a in a meaningful. Uh, even though it's a preseason, it's a meaningful game because it's the start of a new season. Yeah, it's going to be so fun to see. Of course, uh, I'll be there at the game as well to uh, call. Oh, that's great! Yeah, super. yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Can't wait to get back. Uh, I guess back in the saddle. Uh, oh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you, know, if you, you know, if you allow me, I'd love to come and chat with you in between periods. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. For we'll, sure. Uh, we'll definitely consider that and uh, have yeah. Gordon Tumlison on uh, our broadcast. And you know what? We'll uh, we'll see you on Sunday, Gordy. Thanks for taking the time. As always, enjoying the Rise and Shine Manitoba. Not on Monday this time, but on Wednesday. Always a pleasure. Perfect. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, and Pilot Mountain kicking off uh, their their female team kicking off their uh, first game of exhibition this Sunday in Pilot Mound against the Pemina Valley Hawks in the MFHL. Going to be awesome. ASTV will be covering that game as well as every one of Pilot Mountain's games this year, whether it's the U18 team, the U17 male team, or the U15 uh, male team as well. So we'll uh, see you Sunday, Gordy. We're going to take another commercial break here on Rise and Shine Manitoba. Coming back after the break on Manitoba show, I'll be joined by Noah Slan, a member of Cancer Care Manitoba Foundation. You're not going to want to miss it. Stick around. More Rise and Shine to come here on ASTV Productions. Why go solar? It's not just for the environment, although that is a great... Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right. I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance. Quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid connected, off grid and battery backup systems are 100% right off in the year you purchase for any company or farm. Do you want to back up your internet? Keep your tills running and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca. Welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba, Manitoba show here on ASTV Productions. Of course, we are live right now. As always, on Rise and Shine Manitoba, on our Facebook at ASTV Productions, on our website, ASTVProductions.com, as well as on our Twitter at Amateur Sports TV. And yeah, uh, as I said, welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba. Just had a chance to talk with uh, my good buddy, 
Gordy Tummelson, goalie coach of Pot Mount Hockey Academy, most recently here on the show. And now we're going to move away from the rink. We're going to move away from agriculture and talk about, uh, you know, raising money for cancer. Of course, Noah Slan is joining me today. Can get both Noah and Enzo on the show today, but great to see one of them. Noah, uh, thank you so much for joining the show today. How are you doing on this Wednesday? Thank you so much for having me, Graham. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm tired. Uh, it's a little earlier. A little yeah. early in the morning for me for my uh, summer sleep schedule, but got to get yeah. back into it since uh, university is starting up again. Yeah, for sure. I know for a lot of people that that's definitely going to be a change is just getting back into that routine of being in the school sleep schedule instead of that summer sleep schedule, exactly. right? But, uh, you know, you were, uh, you and Enzo, busy people on the uh, August 21st date and August 22nd date, completing the bike ride to, you know, Gimli and back, just, uh, you know, looking back at it, how, how surreal is it that you guys were able to accomplish what you guys were able to accomplish once again, just completing that bike ride? Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty surreal. Um, the first day, August 21st, there were lots of weather scares, so we actually didn't make it to Gimli. We actually did 90 kilometers in the in Winnipeg instead. We did five laps, um, five 18-kilometer laps. Um, 18 is symbolizes life the number um so we did five 18 kilometer laps and then on sunday we went to gimli so unfortunately we couldn't go to gimli but we couldn't do the bike ride to and from gimli both days but we still got our 185 kilometers in and it was still still a good feeling riders had a good time uh we ended up raising over twenty seven thousand dollars, almost twenty eight thousand. hopefully we can hit twenty eight thousand. and yeah uh next year we're hoping for bigger things yeah, for sure. Yeah, unfortunately, you guys weren't able to to do what you guys uh, had regularly scheduled uh, at first, but still great. You guys were able to uh, change up and uh, get to do do what you guys want to do in some capacity, right? Just uh, you know, talking about it this year, you guys had twenty five riders on the team. Uh, what was that experience like, and just coordinating that and handling that when the event uh, happened on August twenty first? Um, honestly, it was it was very stressful. Um, it was very rewarding, but very stressful. Uh, couldn't have done it without my mom. Um, we ended up only having 17 riders, unfortunately. 25 people raised money. Um, unfortunately, logistically, um, a couple people just uh, weren't feeling it on the day, weren't feeling well. So COVID, obviously, smart to stay home. Yeah. Um, so anyway, 17 riders, um, which, which I was happy about. Um, next year, hoping for 100 or even more um going big uh but yeah this year we had to stop it off at 25 and it was unfortunate that all 25 couldn't show up but yeah um it is what it is and next year's gonna be good and i'm already looking forward to it yeah i bet uh you know with uh, how, how you guys grew this uh fundraiser this year from last year i mean adding more riders uh raising more money just awesome to see and just looking at that number uh got it here like like you said over twenty seven thousand dollars raised uh just in, in total talking about this accomplishment uh, of seeing this number truly after it. it's all said and done after you guys can, completed the bike ride uh ju just to see this number how how surreal is it tr truly seeing this number it's 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 pretty surreal um it's pretty surreal to think that uh just what me and enzo Enzo texted me last year, I want a bike ride to Gimli. I'm like, sure, I want to make it a fundraiser. And now just now that it's this, a year and a year and a half later, it's it, it is very surreal. It's very rewarding. And I hope that our money can go a long way to making a difference and to improving um patients' lives. Yeah, for, for sure. No doubt about it. That's what it's all about is raising money for this disease that is, uh, you know, it's affected a, a family like you're like anyone out there that's been affected by cancer just knows how uh, how severe it is. Even if you don't experience it firsthand, just seeing the loved ones around you, it's just a terrible, terrible disease that, uh, you know, with you and Enzo and your team, what you were able to do, it goes a long way for you guys raising the money you did it and to you know potentially finding a cure right but you know just talking about the the pride that you feel personally knowing that you were able to follow through and complete this bike ride with, with enzo and the team um yeah it was it was it was very rewarding um we had lots of 
volunteers that come out that came out and helped us out and so thankful for them they made us feel so great about what we were doing they made it easier on us uh, they made us forget about our pain in our butts and uh, and yeah it was it was it was a good feeling and all all the riders had a good time which is also which i was also very happy about um no one no one struggled too hard um everybody everybody who came out finished um so yeah yeah great feeling um and cancer care people are very grateful they're they have lots of gratitude towards us um and yeah they're they're also looking forward to next year yeah let's uh move on to next year now of course you you thinking big uh, I know Alienzo is too. Uh, you know, with the amount of riders you want to bring in, just uh, what what goes into like the the planning? Or are you guys starting to you know kind of already strategize about what this thing is going to look like next year? Or are you guys going to take some time off? What what's the process going to be like for uh, for you guys heading into next year into to planning this thing and to potentially making it a bigger thing than it is already? Yeah, good question. And my brain's already on last year. I keep bringing it up. So <laughs> thank you for asking. Um, so we're brainstorming right now. We're not like doing concrete planning for it. But right. what we're thinking is we're going to keep it in Winnipeg next year, um, just for logistical reasons and safety reasons. Um, there's this 20 kilometer stretch of the highway that um, it doesn't really have a paved shoulder. It has like this much paved shoulder. Mm. And besides yeah. that, it's gravel. So it's either really hard to bike on the gravel or pretty or kind of unsafe biking on the paved part that tiny part so we're going to take that out we don't want to be liable for that when we have more riders so we're going to keep in winnipeg we're going to either do laps or make some sort of route in winnipeg i have my cousin that's a rider that made a route for us this time with a day's notice so he's going to make us a, an awesome route and with that we're going to try and help get cancer care to help us organize it to, and to advertise it we're going to Months in advance, we're going to contact news, radio, uh, the newspaper, and we're going to try and get, like, our main goal is going to be to get as many sponsorships as possible and as many riders as possible. So right, as many riders to raise as much money as possible and as many sponsorships to make the riders, to, to have riders have a memorable time and have this be a memory and a rewarding experience. And so they come back and ride next year. And, yeah, we're just going to, I'm going to text everyone I know, ask them if they want to ride. And hopefully they text people they know, and hopefully it grows. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, it, it'd be awesome to to see how this grows. And you know that we're we're always going to be here. I'm always going to be here uh, to uh, you know give you guys the coverage you deserve because what you guys were able to do, like I've said, uh, every time I've had you guys on has been absolutely phenomenal. To see and Noah, of course. As always, great to talk to you. Uh, thanks for you know taking the time, uh, not sleeping in, and joining the show today. It was, it was a lot of fun as always, just getting to talk about uh, the, the great thing that you were able to do for cancer. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Graham, and thanks for thanks for the coverage. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, no worries, Noah. Anything we can do to uh, spread awareness for what you guys have done, uh, like I said, is uh, is uh, our pleasure for sure. So we're going to take uh, another commercial break here in the show. I'll be back with out Noah to uh, give you guys a segment of Graham's opinion today here on Manitoba show rise and shine Manitoba coming up after the break. We got more rise and shine Manitoba here on ASTV production. Stick around. And welcome back to Rise and Shine Manitoba. Of course, Noah Slan of Cancer Care Manitoba Foundation joined me on the show today to talk about their bike ride to raise money for cancer. Uh, that that whole fundraiser, just a great thing that him, uh, Enzo Sapita, and the rest of their team uh, were able to do a, a great feat that they accomplished raising that amount of money uh, this year. And yeah. It'll be interesting to see what type of money they are able to raise again next year for sure. Uh, when they do this fundraiser again, like Noah said, they're looking to go uh, bigger and uh, get this thing uh, as big as they can get it. So that'll be a lot of fun to see. But yeah, um, we're going to 
move into a segment now. First of all, I just noticed that the uh, graphic I was using here was Evolve Greenworks, not for this show. My apologies for that. That was an error on my part. But yeah, um, of course, you guys just heard from our sponsor. Just saw the commercial from one of our sponsors in AETI, a uh, great sponsor that supports us here on the show. And yeah, um, thanks to all the sponsors so far that have uh, appeared in the show today. It's uh, it's always great to be able to show the the commercials of these great sponsors that we have. I'm going to grab my phone here because it's time to do another edition of Graham's opinion here on uh, Manitoba Show. Always fun to do Graham's opinion here. Um, you know, today I know that in the social media posts that was put out on our Facebook and on our Twitter. I said that we'd be doing not only CFL talk today, but some NFL talk. We're going to hold off on the NFL talk today on this show because uh, I don't want to reveal my Super Bowl pick just yet. We'll be doing that tonight at 7.30 here on the network. Me and host of the AAA show here on ASTV Productions, Jared Downer, going to be doing an NFL 2021-2022 season special. We're going to be giving you guys our standings prediction on that, how we think the divisions will play out and who gets the wild cards. We're going to give you the, the records of every team, the way we see it playing out, panning out, I guess, uh, playing out, panning out, any way you put it. But um, we're also going to be giving you our playoff predictions as well and who's going to win the Super Bowl and our award predictions as well. So coming up on uh, ASTV Productions tonight, live at 7.30, we're going to be doing an NFL special. Stay tuned for that coming up tonight on the network. But let's get into, uh, you know, the uh, CFL talk today. I'm going to not do as much of a week four, re a week five recap today, but we're going to be doing uh, some power rankings, and I'm going to be also giving you guys my uh, week six predictions as well. So let's get into it. Uh, starting off with the ninth team on the list, the last place team in the power rankings, the Ottawa Red Blacks. And man, what what is there to say about Ottawa? Not much. They haven't been able to get um, any good or consistent QB play this season. Um, you know, I, I wasn't able to really watch that game they played against Montreal, but I checked in at points, and man, they just got smoked. It, it just seems like other teams are ahead of them. Uh, it seems like other teams were more talented than Ottawa. I love their coach. Paul Lapolis, of course, him being a former Bomber OC, but uh, that, that team just, in my opinion, doesn't have the talent to compete with teams in the East. Uh, I mean, teams in the West, let alone teams in the East right now at this point, just looking how it's going. Of course, Montreal absolutely smacked them um, in Ottawa on Ottawa's home field. And yeah, um, it just, for me, it's in terms of, can they find their QB, uh, and can this team, you know, com compete with the other teams in the East to, to potentially get that, uh, final playoff spot if there's not a crossover this year, which I, I think could be very unlikely with just how strong the West is and how competitive it is every year. But yeah, Ottawa and last, I don't really think that's a surprise for anyone that's been following the league this year. They, other than that, when they had first game against Edmonton, where I think Edmonton wasn't even really the, the same team that they are at this point. Um, yeah, Ottawa hasn't looked very great. Uh, and it's a, it's a team that you could potentially, you know, snag a win on uh, in weeks consistently. But moving on to the next team, the Calgary Stampeders. You know, looking at Calgary this season, they've, uh, they've looked solid at points and they've, you know, not looked like the same team at points. This isn't the same Calgary team as we're used to seeing. Of course, with Bo Levi Mitchell out, it's 
it's a different dynamic. Uh, even though he wasn't playing his best football before he got injured, uh, having Meyer in the game, even though he's he looked solid in that game against Winnipeg, uh, wasn't able to really replicate the same success. Of course, uh, Calgary dropping their game to Edmonton, and Edmonton really seems like they could be coming along and finding their stride if they continue their play. But yeah, um, you know, Calgary didn't really have a chance to watch that game, but at this point, just they they haven't had the results that other teams in the league have had. Um, you know, one and four right now, they are uh, technically the worst team in the league at this point, just because they haven't had a bye week yet. They have one more loss than Ottawa, but you know, for for Calgary, you, you got to think that they'll they'll try to figure out a, figure it out at some point they got so much pedigree and so much history of uh, always being the contender in the playoffs i just feel like this year at this point it's uh, it's looking a bit different especially with low levi out for the amount of games that he's out for moving on to the bc lions um a team that had a buy but a, a team that in my opinion has the best quarterback in the league in mike riley that offense even though they haven't completely found their groove yet has uh, put up some good yards this season. I, I said it last week and yeah, the, this defense at times, in my opinion, so far has been able to uh, wreak some havoc on some teams, I guess. Um, you know, looking back at that game against beast against Calgary when they, uh, you know, outplay Calgary significantly in um, every every part of the ball game, uh, forcing Bo Levi Mitchell to, to make more mistakes than he ever had. Um, you know, they got a solid coach in Rick Campbell. I've always been a fan of Rick Campbell. I don't know why Ottawa ever fired him, but that's in the past. But yeah, the Lions coming up against the Red Blacks, a, a chance for them to uh, beat them again and move to three and two on the season should be interesting to see. Um, but I'm not sure if they're going to move up in my power rankings, uh, ju just considering the level of competition they'll be playing next week. Um, looking at the Toronto Argonauts now, they're my sixth ranked team on this list. And, you know, the Argos coming into this season, so much talent on the offensive side of the ball, and they've had some big wins. Um, well, one in particular against Winnipeg uh, two weeks ago. Uh, they didn't have a chance to play last week, and I'm not sure what happened this week, but they got smacked against Hamilton, and I just think that comes down to Hamilton being a better team. But the Toronto Argonauts so far this season have looked either really good or uh, pretty poor. And, um, you know, it's just interesting. They got a decision to make, I guess, a quarterback, if you want to say that. Nick Arbuckle and uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson have both looked, you know, solid in games and they both struggle in games in my opinion i don't think that you should keep switching quarterbacks that's going to mess up the the rhythm and the routine of how guys click and stuff like that with a certain quarterback if you, you keep switching uh back and forth between the two i think that nick arbuckle should be the guy uh i think that he you know even though mcleod bethel thompson was able to to lead the league in, in touchdown passes uh, in 2019. I just feel like Nick Arbuckle is the guy that they should roll with. This team has great weapons. Um, Eric Rogers was a huge ad for them. Um, and, you know, the, this is a team that has shown they can beat teams like, like Winnipeg. Uh, they, they beat a team like Calgary too, right? Even though they just got smacked against Hamilton, they, they've never really had that success uh that uh they, they never really had that success at uh tim horton's field on uh, on the labor day weekend but yeah for for toronto a team that's put up some good games this year some bad games and yeah they've uh they land at number six on my power rankings so far talking about the edmonton elks now they come in at number five uh, this is a team that I, I think is finding their groove offensively right now. You just look at it. You got one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Trevor Harris. You got a great running back in James Wilder Jr., one of the top backs in the league, as well as the best duo at receiver in the league on paper in uh, Walker and Ellingson. And, uh, you know, the, this defense at, at times has looked really good. 
uh, talking about that game against uh, Edmonton. Uh, they, they finally showed up that defense and were able to, well, not finally showed up. They, they showed up the week before against Calgary, but, uh, yeah, the, this defense for them, no, not against Calgary. My apologies. I'm thinking of BC, but yeah, in that game against Edmonton, they, that defense showed up and yeah. Um, you know, a, a team that I, I no. Yeah, against BC. I'm having a brain fart here, folks. I don't know why, but yeah, uh, this offense has has one of the uh, potentials to be one of the top offenses in the league. I just think you look at their talent. Uh, they got a top QB in the league, uh, a top RB, uh, one of the top RBs, as well as, you know, uh, loads of talent on the receiving side of things. And yeah, uh, this is a team that, you know, could potentially be a, a dark horse heading into playoffs. You never know if that team uh, finds their game at the right time, what they're able to do. But yeah, uh, Edmonton coming in at number five on my power rankings. Going into number, uh, you know, number, uh, before we move on to the Yells, just talking about it, uh, I thought it was so impressive how Edmonton was able to go into Calgary and uh, come out away with the win that they, they did after having a week off. I mean, uh, COVID didn't affect them like uh, severely at all because they were able to, to come back and play. But definitely a huge win going into to Calgary, which is uh, always a tough place to play in, right? So, yeah, uh, Edmonton at number five on my power rankings for the CFL. Talking about the Montreal Alouettes now, uh, a statement game for them against Ottawa, just proving that this is a team that can win big games like this against an opponent that they're, they're supposed to easily handle. Uh, best offense in the league as of today, 113 points. That's 28.25 points per game on average. Uh, Vernon Adams uh, leads the lead leads the league in touchdown passes with a nine passing TDs. They got a top running back in the league and uh, stand back, and they got some weapons too. You talk about Eugene Lewis, uh, Winneke, uh, you, you talk about Cunningham as well. This team is loaded. Uh, the, the defense, you know, at times hasn't looked the best, but this is also a team, you know, they, they showed in that game against Edmonton earlier in the season that they can come out and, and really – uh, stifle a uh, team's attack offensively, but yeah, um, they're here at, at number four just because of uh, you know the, the team in front of them was able to beat them and has looked and has looked pretty strong uh, since their bye week, and that's the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Uh, gone out in the last two games and made statements, uh, beating two teams that were over them in the standings before. Now this team is tied for first in the East after dominating Montreal and Toronto. The defense has stepped up hugely, minimizing what teams are able to get done on offense. You just look at what Vernon Adams Jr. was able to do against them, not much. And then you look against uh, Toronto, Nick Arbuckle wasn't able to do much too. And they, they ended up having to switch a quarterback at, at some point in that game. Dane Evans has stepped up his game as well. I like what I'm seeing from him playing turnover free football to this point. Got better in this game than he did in his debut in the season. And, and this O line was was a bit better. I don't know if that's due to Toronto's uh, lack of pass rush. I, I didn't watch the game, but this O line only gave up uh, three sacks last week. And yeah, Hamilton coming into the season, I think they were the favorites. Uh, to come out of the East and represent the East again in the Grey Cup, I, I can see that being a strong possibility at this point, just knowing that they, they finally got the secondary they want to roll with. And they, that offense is uh, starting to, you know, in a way, uh, starting to pick up just a bit, doing, doing better than they once were. But, yeah, um, they're my number three team. And uh, I think this top two, is uh, pretty undisputed. Um, just looking at these teams' records, uh, coming in at number two, I got the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Um, coming off their first loss of the season uh, against Winnipeg on Labor Day, which is crazy just to, to see Winnipeg uh, going in there into Saskatchewan and doing what they did, just knowing the history of what that Labor Day game has. Um, and I'm happy to say that I predicted the Bombers would win that game, uh, said it to my dad that I thought we'd pull off the W. So, uh, for the, or the Bombers would pull off the W. So definitely a win for, for the W 
for sure. But yeah, um, you know, starts with the defense for this team. Uh, they're the main reason why they stayed in that game against Winnipeg, uh, just with how that Saskatchewan offense was, was turning things over. Uh, just Fajardo throwing three interceptions. And despite the poor showing for that offense uh, in that game on Labor Day, the Riders offense has been able to put up points on the board. They've been one of the best offenses in the league this year, averaging the second most points per game in the league uh at this point um or or among the top um Fajardo third in passing yards uh Powell fourth in rushing yards Kyra and Moore leads the league in reception so they definitely got some weapons offensively the the one thing that Saskatchewan has to do is shore up that offensive line if they don't want what happened this week against Winnipeg to happen again but uh yeah um talking about the number one team on my list it's the winnipeg blue bombers and i know you might say it's biased this is my favorite team but come on just look at what the bombers have been able to do this season they're the first team to beat an undefeated team uh the undefeated team in saskatchewan and you know this defense for the bombers has been the biggest factor in their wins uh 67 points against that's 13.4 points allowed in uh games on average and they've had three games holding teams to under 10 points when you're able to get that and have the type of offense that we've had this year that hasn't been superb but it's been good enough to get it done uh with a defense like that that's kind of what you need and the the offense has been decent but has to get better for the bombers i, I think caleros has been solid you can say what you want about him but he, he's making the throws he needs to he's been really consistent throughout this season as well uh looking at his stats he's among one of the top qbs in the league this season uh harris being back for the bombers is huge Best running back in the league, in my opinion. I don't know how you can't call him that, just looking at what he's done in his past three seasons before this one. But uh, him being back is a game changer for the Bombers, just looking at what he's not only able to do in the path, in the running game, but the passing game as well, and in helping uh, being that extra blocker for the Bombers, too. And looking at the receiving core, we got weapons, and a uh, standout has been Kenny Waller. Uh, He's been great this season. Top three in receptions, yards, and TDs. And for this Bombers team, the, the defense showed what it was truly made of. Uh, making a statement against Saskatchewan. Uh, making Fajardo's life miserable. Just that pass rush that we got is insane. Um, putting pressure on QBs that the Bombers have is insane. Putting pressure on QBs. And yeah. Uh, this is a team that has been able to, to get a lot of turnovers this year. If the offense picks up, this is a team that I think is going to be very hard to beat. And it's not like this offense has been terrible, just hasn't been up to the, the standard that it usually is. But I think that it, it's going to change because you just look at a guy like Andrew Harris being back. He's the lifeblood of that Bombers offense when he's healthy. He's going to be a game changer. I think that we're going to uh, start to see this Bombers team uh, be able to do more things with Harris at running back. And yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what the Bombers are able to do in the rematch against Saskatchewan this week on Banjo Bowl uh, on a triple header on Saturday. Let's uh, make some predictions now of what I think is going to happen this week. Starting off with the Hamilton Tiger Cats and Toronto Argonauts. In this one, you know, back-to-backs are definitely a tricky thing to predict. But just looking at how Hamilton is trending right now, at how strong they've looked, I'm going to go with Hamilton. Just I, I feel more confident in Hamilton's quarterbacking game right now than I do in Toronto's, even though I think Nick Arbuckle is a solid QB. I, I just feel like the inconsistencies in a way have been there. Um, I know that I talked about it, that I, I don't think that it's that big of a deal. But going up against a team like Hamilton, um, a team that I think is has the best roster in the east i i just feel like the, this could be 
you know, I, I think it's going to be a closer game, but I, I think that Hamilton is still going to come away with with the win in, in that uh, rematch in, um, on, on BMO Field. I just feel like this team is finally finding their stride, and they got that confidence now of knowing that they can win games after starting on two. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Hamilton Tiger Cats on that one. Looking at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Saskatchewan Rough Riders, you know what? This is a tough one because Winnipeg showed that they have potential and, in my opinion, are the best team in the CFL uh, at this point, um, obviously, with, with that first place record in the West. You know, looking at Saskatchewan, I think they'll be motivated to bounce back. And Saskatchewan's got so much talent on their team. They were the best team in the league through the first three weeks. You know, just looking at it, I'm going to go with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Just in terms of the, the back-to-backs, Winnipeg, uh, of course, this season, uh, 0-1 on, uh, in the second game of the back-to-back, even though they, they've only had uh, one back-to-back uh, game against teams this season. But, yeah, um, I just feel like everyone is going to be expecting the Bombers to roll the riders again uh, i don't think it's going to be that easy i think saskatchewan has you know a, a top qb in the league in uh cody fajardo they got a lot of weapons up front it just depends on what that o-line is able to do uh, if this was a playoff game i'd be picking winnipeg but since it's a, a regular season game and we saw you know, Winnipeg do something that hasn't been done in a very long time, go out and win on Labor Day, and we usually win the, and the Bombers usually win the game on, uh, in that Banjo Bowl. I'm going to go with the Riders, just, I, I think they're going to come in with, uh, you know, a lot to prove uh, to not only themselves, but the fans by being able to, to try to beat this Bombers team. But I think that they're going to be ready, and I, I feel like it's going to be a close game, but I think the Riders uh, are, are going to come out with it in the end. Uh, I know I'm a Bombers fan, but uh, I got to be unbiased here. I, I think that Saskatchewan is going to bounce back, and it, it's not going to be a blowout. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a, a physical game, I think. Uh, two great defenses going at it, but I, I think that the Riders are, are going to come away with uh, with with the win this Saturday. Looking at Edmonton and Edmonton and Calgary, uh, I'm rolling with Edmonton in this game. I, I love what I'm seeing from their offense right now. I, I think that defense has uh, really been, uh, you know, uh, a, a good defense this year. Uh, other than that game against Montreal, um, this, this is a team that with uh, the offense clicking the way it does with Calgary not having, uh, you know, the, the type of success that they've been able to have this season that they usually have had, even though uh, Jake Meyer has been uh, impressive in his game against Winnipeg. I just feel like, He's not going to be that guy that's going to be able to you know, keep Calgary afloat, if we're being honest. I might be wrong on that. If he proves me wrong and goes out and has a good game against Edmonton, then I'll uh, I'll give an apology. But, yeah, uh, not saying Jake Meyer is a bad quarterback. It's just I, I like Trevor Harris a lot better. I like that Edmonton offense a lot better, and I feel like they, they're going to be fired up to uh, – go out and, and try to beat the, the Calgary Stampeders again. But, you know, Calgary is going to come out as well. I think it's going to be a, a close game once again. Um, what was it? You know, even though it was 32 to 20 last week, I think that, you know, looking at that game, uh, it, it was close until that fourth quarter when Edmonton pulled away. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like Calgary is going to give them a run again. Um, Calgary, you can never really 
count them out, but I'm going to roll with Edmonton. I like the quarterback factor of having Trevor Harris there. I, I like how uh, they, they got the weapons and the running back as well. And, uh, yeah, I, I like their defense in this matchup as well, going up against uh, a Bo Levi, Mitchell, List, Calgary, Stampeders team. Um, moving into the BC Lions Ottawa Red Blast game, which is going to be the final game of Saturday's triple header. Yeah, I'm rolling with BC. Uh, I don't think Ottawa is up to snuff. You know, maybe, maybe you know, crazier things happen in the CFL, but just looking at this team, I'm not betting against Mike Riley uh, against the Ottawa Red Blacks. I, I like BC's offensive talent more. Then Ottawa's Ottawa needs to figure out who their QB is first. And yeah, I, I like BC's defense a lot in this game as well. Even though that they, they beat Ottawa already this year, I see the same thing happening. I see BC going out and uh, grabbing their first win of the year at home and moving to three and two. So I'm rolling with Hamilton. I'm rolling with Hey, I hate to say it, uh, Saskatchewan. I'm rolling with the Edmonton Elks, and I'm rolling with the BC Lions. So, yeah, um, that's going to do for this edition of Graham's Opinion on Rise and Shine Manitoba. Of course, like I said uh, in this show, you're going to be seeing a NFL 2021 season prediction show here tonight on ASTV at 7.30 Central Daylight Time. You can catch that one live on our network at Facebook at ASTV Productions. You can also catch it on our website at ASTVProductions.com or on our Twitter at Amateur Sports TV. I want to give a special shout-out to the guests who joined me in today's show in Harry Siemens, Gordy Tummelson, and Noah Slan. Also, a special thanks to you, the viewer, for tuning in today on this Wednesday. And I also want to give a shout-out to uh, our sponsors of today's edition of Coffee with Graham and Fabricland, Winkler, Evolve Green, AETI, and a sponsor you guys are going to see in a moment in System Beauty in Systems of Beauty College. The next edition of Rise and Shine Manitoba is going to be back on the regular scheduled day of Monday next week at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. You can catch it on our website, Facebook, or Twitter. But until then, folks, um, oh, coffee with Graham. Uh, might have an episode tomorrow, might not. But if there is an episode, you can catch that one on our Facebook and on our website uh, at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time tomorrow morning. But until next week on monday folks i've been your host of rise and shine manitoba manitoba show graham forsyth signing off now until i see you monday folks have a wonderful rest of your wednesday stay safe out there and have a wonderful weekend as well peace out everybody just gotta find this ad no, yeah, yeah. Peace out, everyone. Have a great day. I think Systems Beauty College is a little bit unique in respect to the way we teach our program. We don't do so much uh, structure and learning and block teaching. Everybody can move along at the pace that suits them. Everybody can move along at the pace that suits them. If they can move faster, they do so. Therefore, learning everything earlier and getting more practice in all segments of hairstyling as opposed to just being stuck in one section for a certain period of time. So we try to accommodate all the different learning styles.